It is such a good, encouraging word, especially closing out a year, to just say, hey, look what happens when you put God first in every area of your life. And I've watched this couple go from where they said they couldn't even agree on how to, how to not overspend to being so blessed today. They're a blessing to so many other people locally around the whole world. And so thank God for who he is and what he does in us. Isn't that good? Are you ready to go to God's word right now? Well, if you've got your Bibles, go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. We've been on a series throughout this month looking at the wonder of Christmas. And it's interesting that uh, everybody that we've looked at in what we would call the classic Christmas story all had wonder in their eyes. They had wonder in their eyes. Do you know your eyes can say a lot? Did you know that? Like without you ever opening your mouth, your eyes can say, what's wrong with you? Without you ever saying that. Or your eyes can say, hey, it's good to see you. Our eyes say so much. In the eyes of these people in the Christmas narrative, they speak so loudly about the wonder that they were filled with, the awe they were filled with at who God really is. Of course, we looked at the shepherds, and you know, they're out doing their thing, and all of a sudden these angels show up. There was a massive, beyond what could be counted, massive heavenly choir, and their eyes had to be fill, filled with awe. Their eyes were filled with wonders. They, they were able to peek beyond this earthly realm and peek in and see a whole different, the supernatural realm. They saw that with their own eyes. They heard it with their own ears. Of course, their eyes were filled with, wow! They weren't looking at their cell phones. They weren't scrolling through social. No, they were, wow, captivated. Of course, Mary and Martha, they, Mary and Martha, <laughs> Mary and Joseph, uh, they had to be captivated by God. Remember us talking about this? God becoming a human baby. They had to be so captivating to look at this little child with, as any parent would look at their kids you know, in awe and wonder, but then also to realize, hey, what those angels said is true. This is not just a baby. This is God's son. Yeah. They had to be filled with so much awe to think that God, it's the humility of God that makes me in such awe that God would step out of, step out of perfection and choose to be born in a smelly stable. What awe at that. What an awesome God we serve. How humble he is. And doesn't this tell us, like, can we pause right here and just once again recognize that Jesus steps into the messes of our world. Yeah. That the messes of our life don't keep Jesus from us. It's what causes Jesus to come to us. Amen. Sometimes we think Jesus only shows up when everything is going good. No, Jesus shows up when life gets really messy. Jesus shows up when life gets ugly. Jesus shows up when sometimes there's more questions than there are answers. Jesus shows up in the mess of our world to make it better, to make it not a mess. So it, is, it had to do with wonder that they looked at this baby who was 100% God and 100% human right in front of them. The creator of the world being held by human hands. What awe and wonder had to fill their eyes. And then, of course, last week we looked at the wise men. These wise men, they, they looked with wonder at a star that they followed for, I don't know, 800 to 1,000 miles until they got to Bethlehem. And then eventually they looked into the eyes of a little baby who is God, who calls out the stars, everyone by name. He calls them like a mighty army. He is himself called the bright morning star. They saw the star, then they saw the star. And their eyes had to be filled with wonder. Here's my question for you. What if 2024 could be a year filled with your eyes being filled with wonder? Like, what if you being in a place of wonder wasn't a little moment here, maybe a few months later, maybe once or twice a year? What if your entire year could be a year filled for you with eyes of wonder? I think that's possible. I know that's possible. And it's my prayer for you, and today we're going to discover from God's Word, how can I have a whole year that is filled with the wonder of who He is? Here we go. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, in fact, can we do this? Can we just stand to our feet for just a moment, just out of reverence for God's Word? And in fact, I want us to also, uh, I want us to pray for Israel. Because, you know, this time of year, everybody's eyes are thinking about Bethlehem and 
you know, Jesus being born, born there, they're in the middle of a war right now. And so come on, can we just lift up holy hands as the Bible says we ought to lift up holy hands in prayer. And Lord, we, just, we lift up holy hands right now and we're praying for Israel. We pray for Israel. We pray that, God, you would protect them. You will keep them by the power of your great name. I pray, Lord, you take everything that is meant for their harm and you turn it around for their good in Jesus' name. We pray for an end, a ceasing of this war in this moment in Jesus' name. God, I thank you. You have already predetermined. You know what's going to happen in Israel. You've got it all planned out. And you ask us to pray for, to bless Israel with our prayers. So we do that this morning. Asking for, your, asking for your hand to be on them. And God, I pray for us as we approach your word today. God, I pray you would give us ears to hear what your Holy Spirit wants to deposit inside of us. We expect today that your word will be active and alive on the inside of our lives and in our homes, in our families, and in our church family today. So God, give us ears to hear and give us hearts to obey. Here we go. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, who is the champion that initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. You may be seated this morning. It's interesting that the writer of Hebrews paints us a picture of all these great cloud of witnesses, these great people of faith that have gone before us. If you read Hebrews 11, that's a chapter filled with just some of, the highlights of some of what we would call the greats of faith. They faced a big trial. They had to endure some things, but they came through on the other side. They were looking for a better land. They had a better promise they were holding on to. These are the greats of faith. And the scripture says that gives us the picture of them all surrounding us, spectating us as we are running our race. What a picture, huh? All these greats of faith that made it. I want you to know this, like, hey, whatever, whatever you're facing now and whatever is yet in front of you, the fact that they made it through Jesus means you can make it too. Yeah. Come on, you can run the race God set before you. So how do we live a life? How can this whole year be filled with wonder? I would say from our text today, first we have to turn from what is holding us back. Turn from what is slowing us down. This is really practical today. Turn from what is holding you back. Turn from what is slowing you down. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Weight is a picture of something that you're able to cast aside, but instead we choose to hold on to it. We choose to retain it. It's anything that blunts the edge of our spiritual appetite. It chokes out prayer. It dulls our conscience. What are the weights that we are holding on to that we don't have to retain? We can actually let that thing go. And the order is critical here. It goes from negative to then positive. It starts with, hey, get rid of some things that are only slowing you down. They're weights. That tends to be, tends to be outward stuff. And also the sin that tends to be inward stuff that entangles your life. We've got to first deal with the negative and lay that stuff down so then we can run the race that God set before us. It always works that way. Too many people try and run the race that God sets before them without ever laying down the junk they've been dragging for years. First you've got to lay it down, then we get to run. I have a very important question to ask you. I want you to think deeply about this. What is there about 2023 that you don't want to carry into 2024? Are there any hurts? Are there wounds? Are there words that were said? Is there a kind of thinking that you've carried for a while, but you don't want to carry that kind of thinking anymore into 2024? Come on, what are the things that it's time to lay down? It's time to let go. 
time stealers, joy stealers, playing the victim. You know, whatever it is for you, what, what is it that it's just time to lay down? I saw the craziest thing. I, I saw two deer, both were bucks, and they had been fighting antlers to antlers. The antlers somehow got stuck. And uh, eventually, I don't know how long this went on, but eventually one of the deer died. So this living deer is stuck to a dead deer. It was so long that the dead deer was decomposing. It was halfway rotted. And I saw that. I thought, one, that's horrible. That is sad. To every day, you can't seem to get away from this dead thing that you just drag from day to day. And you can't even help not look at it because it's right there every day. Then my mind went to you. It went to us. What are the things we're dragging around? Apparently, two bucks got in the fight, and now one buck is dragging around an old fight. How many people dragging, are dragging around an old fight, an old wound, an old happening? Come on, I'm telling you, it's time to lay it down so you can run the race that God has set before you. It's time to lay down words that were said that should have never been said. It's time to lay down the wrong that happened that should have never happened. It's time to lay down the offense that was done, the injustice that was done to you. It's time to lay that down. You don't have to. Carry that from one year to the next. How many people are carrying around something that Jesus died? Watch this. Jesus died. He bled so that you wouldn't have to keep carrying that. And yet from year to year, some carry it from year to year. And listen, I I value and I appreciate counselors. But I want you to understand something. You can carry something for, for 20, 30, 50 years that a counselor can never pull out of you, but the blood of Jesus can. So the giant question is, well, Pastor Kevin, it sounds great to get rid of that, but how do I get rid of that? How do I get that thing off of me? How do I keep reliving that? How do I keep re-seeing that thing? Colossians 1 20 says, Jesus, he made peace with everything in heaven and on earth. How? By means of Christ's blood on the cross. It is only by the blood. Ephesians 2, 16. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God. What groups? These are the groups he's referring to. Paul, the apostles, referring to two groups, Jews and and Gentiles that that we're still seeing to this day are forever hostile toward each other. So he's taken two groups and made two groups one. How did he bring the hostility between two groups into one? That's only possible through faith in Christ. Because now there's no longer, there doesn't have to be this separation between this group or this group or between black and white or this anger between that person or that person. He brings all that together to God. How? By means of his death on the cross. And watch this. And our hostility toward each other was put to death. What what does that tell us? That tells us that the hostility that was absolutely there between us and God, because of sin, there was hostility between us and God. God is forever hostile towards sin. He will always be adamantly opposed to sin. So there was hostility there. It'll go on to say, hey, we were once his enemies because of sin. But the blood of Jesus, that's Jesus coming to the earth, as we've talked about all month long, the wonder of this, Jesus putting on human skin and then taking out the penalty for our sin on himself because God is just, so he justly dealt with sin. So that now, through faith in Jesus, there is no hostility between us and God. Isn't that good news? Also, there need be no hostility between each other. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. 
So we don't have to carry hostility from one year to the next year to the next year to the next year. No, because the blood of Jesus, we get to say, hey, listen, you get to just stay there where you are. I've got to lay some things aside. I've mentioned before my neighbor was into golfing. I'm not a golfer. He quickly found that out. And, uh, but as we're golfing, it's what he liked to do, so we did it. We're golfing, and I quickly realized that when I hit the ball, only Jesus knows where that thing went, right? It's, it's out there somewhere. I don't know where. And I would have a general idea, and I'd say, so we got to go find that, right? So, no, you don't got to go find that. Let that thing just sit there and think about what it did to you. So, oh, I like this. So I can just whack, any, I just whack them anywhere, and they can get, you sit there and think about what you did to me, you know? I ended up having to buy a lot of golf balls that year. But you know what's, you know what's good for us, though? It's good for us to, to look at some things today. This is really important that we look at some, some things today, and the Holy Spirit's going to spotlight some things that you're going to lay down today. Not tomorrow, not next week. Today, you're going to lay that thing down. And you're going to say, you know what? You can just stay right there and think about it yourself because I'm not going to think about it anymore. I'm not going to go there anymore. It's not going to rule me anymore. Let's lay some things down. I've heard it said that it's the things that we stop, that we lay down, they end up being the things that we're most likely just slowing us down in our journey. It's the things that we start that God calls us to start, the good things that tend to propel us. So again, my question to you is, what are the things that you want to stop and lay down that you don't want to carry into the next year? And then what are the good things that you want to start? They're, they're things that won't hold you back. They're things that will propel you. Can I give you a couple ideas? One would be, how about this? How about praising God seven times a day? I mentioned a few weeks ago that I was reading and I read that King David said, I praise the Lord seven times a day. I thought, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that. And I, I figured out with my schedule, that means for my awake hours, that's about every two hours and 15 minutes that I'm praising the Lord. Isn't that cool? Praise the Lord seven times a day. Do you know you, the average person picks up their phone 96 times a day? Lord, help. Well, if you're picking up your phone 96 times a day, you can praise God seven times a day. In fact, hey, why not this? Why not every time you pick up your phone, you stop and praise God first? Ho, ho. Now you're like 96 times a day. Hey, and when I do this, it's not this, hey, praise you, Lord, and then right on. Like, I, it's stop what you're doing. If I'm in a meeting, I have to wait. But, but I stop what I'm doing. I walk away from it, and I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for being kind to me. Thank you for doing, I get specific. Thanks for doing that. And Lord, I thank you. I know you're going to be doing that thing too. Thank you. It lifts my whole day. I think that can propel you into 2024 in all the right ways. Here's something else good that you could start. And that's fasting. We're going to do a church-wide fast starting January 8th, Monday, January 8th. And, and I'm going to ask everybody to participate in that in some way for 21 days. What I'm asking you to do, some of you, that's not new. We do that every year. What might be new is for you to live a fasted life. Where I don't fast just once a year when pastor asks us to. I fast, on, I, I make fasting just part of the way that I live. Living a fasted life. Listen, fasting is not twisting God's arm to get God to do something that he doesn't want to do. No, fasting is positioning yourself for a miracle. Fasting is positioning yourself for a miracle, not just for you, but for somebody else. You know, one of the, things, one of the great things fasting does, fasting puts our flesh, our body, in the right position that's last in place. Instead of being led by what our flesh, what our body wants, we're saying, hey, no, the spirit is in charge, so you're just going to have to wait. It's good for us. It's healthy for us to say, no, the spirit man is first and the flesh is last. I don't take my orders from what my body wants, but what the Holy Spirit wants to do inside of me. Fasting is all part of that. So I want to encourage you this week, even as you came and hopefully you were handed one of these little deals right here. It says 21 days of prayer and fasting. Give some different ways that you can participate. I want you this week, look this over. 
Look at some of the benefits of fasting. I'd encourage everyone, if you don't have it, get Pastor Dave Williams' book, The Miracle Results of Fasting. It is by far the best book I've ever read, and I've read a lot of books, the best I've ever read on fasting. And so I encourage you, get that book. You can go to our resource center, right to, across from the Connect Center. If they're out, they'll get more, right? But that really will help you get a good grip on what fasting is. But I encourage you uh, to head in that direction. Okay, how do we live a life of wonder all year long? One, we've got to drop some things, right? We've got to let go of some things that have been holding us back, slowing us down. The weights and the sin that so easily entangles our lives. Number two, we have to run our race with endurance. If we want to have eyes of wonder, we've got to get this word endurance down and run our race with endurance. Endurance is beautiful, and endurance is really hard, right? If we don't run our race with endurance, do you know what happens? We end up not wanting to run our race anymore. Like, hey, you know, Lord, I think I like their race better. I want to go run that race. To run your race with endurance means we're running our lives the way Jesus lived his life. We're running our race the way he ran his race. How was that? Thank you for asking. I'm glad to share that with you. He ran his race like this. He started out in glory in heaven. He ended up in glory in heaven. We read that in, in these verses, right? Seated at the right hand of God. But in between glory and glory was the cross that he had to endure. Our life is the same. We started created by God in heaven. Man was made. We are returning through faith in Christ to glory. And in between, there's a cross that you have to endure. And when you have to endure something, it doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It doesn't mean it's your fault. It means part of our journey is we're going to have to endure some things. And if we don't get that that's part of our journey, we're forever trying to run a different race other than the race God put right in front of us to run. We have to have endurance to get through the difficult times. I found that often people want you to run their race. It says, run the race God set before you. What's the race God set before you? Stay in your lane and run your race. You don't have to get in somebody else's lane. You don't have to run their race. Run the race God set before you and do that with endurance. How, Pastor Kev, can I have endurance? This is the tough part. You know how we get endurance? By going through difficult things. Yep. We don't get endurance any other way. We don't get character any other way other than by going through some very difficult things with our eyes fixed on him. With trusting that, God, you are directing my path. I acknowledge you in all my ways, and you're, you're not far from me. You're walking through this thing with me. Run your race with endurance. And I pray especially for those of you who have li lived with delayed promises, with discouragement, that God would give you a fresh infusion of endurance today to run your race with endurance. Keep the joy set before you just like Jesus did. Yeah. Thirdly, how can we run our race? All 2024 with eyes of wonder, we do that by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Amen. How do we lay down things that we don't want to keep dragging around from one year to the next? Oh, we do that by keeping our eyes on Jesus. How can I run this race 2024 with endurance, tenacity, stick to itiveness? How can I do that? We do that by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Have you ever noticed that whatever you look at, you tend to be drawn toward that? That our lives are forever pulled in the direction of our most dominant thought or whatever we keep in view of us. Like this is why somebody created rumble strips. You know what a rumble strip is? It's what I need because I'm driving down the road and I see, like, I love the outdoors. So I'm looking at the, I'm not, I'm not completely not looking at the road, but I do now and then like, hey, there's a deer. Hey, before I know it, oh, I got to get back on the road. Got to get back on the road. I think we need some holy rumble strips to help us that when we get our eyes off the master, we get our eyes on that thing or them or that situation. Oh my, how, what? We need to, oh, wait, I got to get my eyes back on Jesus. Let me get my eyes back on Jesus and what he's done. 
Come on, we can only lay things down by keeping our eyes on him. We can only have endurance by looking what he endured. Somebody said, if you want a horse to run faster, just move its head toward home. If you just move its head toward home, that horse will move faster. Sometimes we just have to move our head toward home. God, just get my eyes to look back at you. I got to get my eyes off of all that and keep my eyes fixed on you. To keep our eyes on Jesus means to keep our eyes on the sacrifice of Jesus. It's to keep our eyes on what he accomplished. So Christmas morning, I'm sitting in my basement early in the morning. I open my Bible to do my daily Bible reading. And I just happened to read Revelation chapter 16, verse 17. It says this, A mighty shout came from the throne of the temple, saying, It is finished. I read that and I thought, well, my prayer thought that day was, Lord, on this Christmas morning, I don't know what the first words of Jesus, God in the form of a human baby, I don't know what his first words were, but I do know what his last words were on the cross. I know he said, it is finished. And I know, according to your word, that at the end of what's called the Great Tribulation, the most horrific time on earth, like at the end of all these judgments that will be poured out on the earth, at the end of that, once again, from the throne, we will hear these words, it is finished. When there's a new heaven and a new earth, and there will be, once again, we'll hear these words, it is finished. So I said, Lord, thank you on this Christmas morning that it is finished finished. Your sacrifice finished sin's grip on me. It finished that. Your sacrifice finished the wound that I don't have to carry because you are wounded so I wouldn't have to live wounded. I can live whole and healed. I thank you that it is finished. If we don't know what Jesus finished for us, we might live all of next year trying to finish something he already finished trying to achieve something he's already achieved for you. We have to keep our eyes on the blood of Jesus and what he has accomplished inside of us. There's no other way to lay things down other than to see that it was through the precious blood of Jesus that he did an end to hostility. It's through the blood of Jesus that healing is a possibility. So to keep our eyes on Jesus is to keep our eyes on his sacrifice, to keep looking at what he accomplished and then saying, Lord, thank you. Again, I encourage you, read Colossians chapter 1 over and over and over and over again. And watch what that will do for you because your eyes are going to constantly be gazing on what he finished for you. But you don't have to finish anymore. Also, keeping your eyes on Jesus means keeping your eyes on his word. And I would encourage you, as we start out a brand new year, just hours away from it, would you, would you maybe sit down with family, with friends, with your life group, and say, hey, what do we want to read together in God's Word this year? You know, there's so many Bible reading plans. For years, I have done the one-year Bible. Now, this year, I'm going to try something called the Bible Recap. It's, it's still going to be the reading through the Bible in one year, just in chronological order. Yeah. But you, you pick out what works for you. But I encourage you, do it with somebody else. Come on, read God's Word with somebody else. I mean, even if you're reading it individually, then later on you can talk about it because you're reading the same thing. You can say, hey, hey well, you know what we were reading this earlier today or, or this week? What was God talking to you? What did you, what do you hear out of that? What's God speaking into your life about that right now? This would be so good for you to do. You can go to Bible.com and just pick out a plan. There's a gabillion plans. Pick out a plan and then, then together go through God's Word. I would give you one caution. Some plans have a lot of devotional thoughts in there and those are probably okay. But what you need is, is God's thoughts, not just somebody else's thoughts. So I would encourage you, don't get a plan that's just filled with somebody else's thoughts. God, listen, one of the things about the Bible, the Bible is the only book you read that the author shows up every time you read it. You know, so if the author's showing up, I want to first talk to the author about what he meant and what he's saying is supposed to, what do they got to say? And then ignore the author who's right there with you. 
Keep our eyes on Jesus. Last, last thought from God's word is let's also make sure. I want your year to be a year filled with the wonder of who he is. I want this to be a year of freedom from things that you don't have to drag around anymore. And here's one more important step for you to make that a reality. You have to run your race with the family of God. Run your race with the family of God. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I want you to notice something. Notice the amount of times that you hear the words we, us, our. Therefore, since we, say we, are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses to the life of faith, let us, say us, Strip off every weight that slows us, say us, us down, especially that sin so easily trips us up, right? And let us, say it again, let us, let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Do you hear how how many times, let us, running your race is something you're not meant to do alone. We're meant to run the race. Let us run this race together. Come on, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Let us run with endurance. Let us look out for each other. In 2024, you don't want to be found running alone. In 2024, you want to be found running with the family of God. What is the family of God? Well, the family of God is the church. The church is everybody from Tanzania to Lansing, Michigan. Like it's global. It's the global body of Christ. That, that's part of the church, but I can't run with them because they live there and I live here. So there is a family, a local church family, that, that, that is an expression of the overall body of Christ. A family that God put you in. A family that God saw fit to make you a part of. Run your race with your family. It's so important this year, you'll hear the word rooted a lot in the next month. It's so important that you are rooted in the family of God, that you're rooted in relationships. I've said so many times, people don't need a program, people need people. People don't need a program, people need people. We need each other. So don't run the race alone. Make sure you run the race with the church family that God has given you. Okay. Let's stop right here and let's, uh, let's respond to the Lord's word. This is, a, this is a really important but a very basic life skill is uh, when someone talks to us, what do we do? We do two things. We should do three things. We look at them in the eyes. We're not looking at our watch. We're paying attention to them. Secondly, we listen really well. We listen intently if someone's speaking to us. Then thirdly, and this is really important, we then respond to what was said. We just heard from God's Word. We have looked at God's Word together. We have listened intently, not letting our mind wander wherever. Listen intently to what God is speaking to us today. Now it's time to respond. To not respond would, would be as awkward as me talking to Al, say, hey, Al, how you doing? And then Al doesn't say anything. He just walks away. It's like, well, Al, you need to learn some people skills. Like, you've got to respond. Say something, brother. You know, but don't just walk away. It would not be right for us to not take time to now respond to God speaking to us. To ask ourselves and ask the Lord, Lord, hey, come on, Lord, what is it you want me to lay down this year? What's the stuff that maybe I didn't even see that I don't have to carry anymore? I thought that was just part of my baggage of life. But Lord, with your help through your blood, what is that thing I don't have to carry any longer? Listen, let God speak that to you. Hello, and thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that message of hope and have been encouraged in your relationship with Jesus Christ. What is the next step God's asking you to take? I would encourage you to check out Growth Track. It's our delight to come along your side and help you reach your full kingdom potential. To give now, you can simply click Give on our website or text any amount to 84321. It is your faithful giving that allows us to continue to preach the gospel and make disciples from our neighborhoods to the nations of the world. Thank you and God bless you.